Kevin Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. An intense three alarm fire overnight this morning. We can see the aftermath. Alicia Barrett joining us live with what we know. Plus some problems that people in District 7 face on a daily basis. How Councilwoman Ana Sandoval hopes to solve these problems with infrastructure problems and Bandera Road. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 59 degrees to start your Monday. What does the rest of the day look like? What does this week look like? The first week in March, we are going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. Thanks for joining us. It is March 1st. I was just looking at Sarah. I was like, yay, it's March. Yay. <laughs> and it feels like March. Well, we are going to see some spring like weather for this first week of March from comfortable temperatures to humidity to the chance for some storms as well. Right now we're sitting in the upper 50s around San Antonio. It's 59 at the airport, 55 at Bernie Stage, 56 in Kerrville, 55 in Hondo and 58 in Pleasanton. And as we head into the rest of the day, we're going to still hang on to these clouds that are out there right now. It'll be a cloudy start, but we should still see some peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. That'll allow us to warm up into the mid to upper 70s today with a south breeze at 5 to 15 miles per hour. And I do want to show you uh, the time lapse there of the sunrise early this morning. You can see how we saw a few peaks of sunshine as the sun rose, but those clouds have really started to take over. And again, it's going to be a fairly cloudy day here, uh, struggling to get rid of those clouds. But I'll talk about those storm chances in the middle of the week coming up in just a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. A local grocery store destroyed by fire overnight, and its customers say it's now a painful reality they have to face. Mustafa Grocery, or what's left of the building, located in the 4800 block of Medical Drive. Our Alicia Berrera is live from the scene, and Alicia was able to speak to the owners. So what have they shared with you? Well, I spoke to the owner, Saeed Siddiqui, and his brother, Ahmed Fayez, and let me tell you, you can really see the hurt, that pain in their face. They say that they've been working on this grocery store for the past 13 years and it serves their community. And I just found out just minutes ago that this grocery store, Mustafa Grocery, is named after uh, Mr. Siddiqui's son. So it's a very special place for them. Um, but again, they're thankful that no one got hurt this morning and that they do have insurance. So there will be some recovery. They haven't been able to recover this morning more than a crate with some papers, but they say that the important documents are all ash this morning. Those documents were stored nearby the area where firefighters believe the fire started. What we're looking at now this morning um, is the back of the store. That's where mo most of the damage is. We can also see major damage to the roof. Fire crews had to actually cut out part of the roof to get all the smoke out this morning. And the owner said it's, of course, painful to see his hard work reduced to ashes. And he's still processing what firefighters have told him. When they arrived, they did find heavy fire coming from the second floor of the structure. They uh, immediately upgraded to a second alarm just because of the size of the uh, of the occupancy. Made an extremely aggressive attack on it, got it stopped, kept the fire from spreading. Uh, they're working right now. We did upgrade to a third alarm just for, uh, for staffing reasons. And this is the third multi-alarm fire uh, that fire crews have responded to since Friday. It's been a very busy weekend for them. Arson is expected to arrive to the scene later on to figure out how this happened. Uh, but fire crews say that they don't find they haven't found anything suspicious just yet. But again, arson will make their way out here just to cover all the bases. And what I can tell you on this uh, shopping strip here, this is the back of it. So this is the back of the grocery store. There's several small businesses around here and just behind where we're standing is a very popular destination that you may be able to remember Taqueria data point. Um, but again, the only business, even though everything is really close by, the only business that was damaged is Mustafa Grocery. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Alicia. Now, one man is behind bars accused of picking up a 12-year-old from school and then sexually assaulting her. According to an arrest affidavit, 33-year-old Marvin Villanueva Alvarado is the husband of one of the child's family members. Now, the affidavit states that he picked up the 12-year-old from school and told her they were going to talk. And that's when police say he drove the child to a friend's house and sexually assaulted her. He is being held on a $65,000 bond.
Well, crews were left cleaning up quite a bit of debris on the highway after four vehicles crashed into each other. San Antonio police tell us that the crash happened just before 2 a.m. on Highway 90 and Proban. Two vehicles reportedly headed eastbound on Highway 90, crashing into each other, leading to two other vehicles to wreck as well. All this resulted in a four vehicle pileup, leaving debris all over the road. Police were actually forced to shut down the area for about 40 minutes as they cleaned it up. Luckily, though, no serious injuries were reported. And turning to local politics this morning, early vote totals are in for Bear County. When you add them all up, more than 122,000 early votes were cast. And that breaks down to more than 78,000 votes in the Democratic Party, more than 43,000 votes in the Republican Party. And if you haven't cast your vote yet, there's still time on Election Day, which is on March 3rd or Super Tuesday. And she made her way from Monterey, Mexico to a San Antonio high school to MIT, Stanford, Harvard, and then back to the Alamo City. District 7 City Councilwoman Ana Sandoval was elected to the council in 2017 and is the first naturalized citizen to serve on the council. In this week's leading essay, Councilman Sandoval and I discussed some of our biggest issues across the Alamo City from Bandera Road projects to fighting childhood obesity. It's a problem we see all around the Alamo City, and we hear about a lot from our neighbors. It's infrastructure, and it is a problem in District 7 as well. It has been building up. We have an underinvestment in our infrastructure in multiple ways. In the city of San Antonio, we've grown very vast, very broadly, and the truth is that's very expensive, maintaining those streets. Roads are key, and for thousands of people every morning, one road in particular is a problem. Bandera Road. This is one of the most congested roads in Texas. Even though it's not a freeway, it's, it's a highway, it carries more traffic than a lot of roads in San Antonio. It carries about 60 to 70,000 vehicles a day. That's freeway level movement through there. The councilwoman says a big problem is a lot of drivers are just trying to cross Bandera. So they're looking for ways to make that happen and decongest the traffic. And Anna Sandoval has a Bandera Road corridor plan. The councilwoman also an advocate of the city's climate action plan. What city council adopted in that plan was to strive for carbon neutrality in 2050. So what does that mean? It means that net we're not adding any more of these uh, dangerous carbon dioxide equivalent emissions to the air. Is the infrastructure in place in San Antonio? No, it's not. I mean, we certainly do have some charging locations, but we would need to see some more if all the vehicles in San Antonio were to become uh, electric. I think that's certainly something we can invest in as a city is having some of that infrastructure. We know obesity and health is a big problem here in San Antonio, and the District 7 Councilwoman is the chairperson of the Community Health and Equity Committee. I think one of the most critical things that we should be working on is ensuring that there is access to healthy food in all parts of the city. And by access, I mean that you can get there and that you can afford it. Councilwoman Ana Sandoval and I discussed the rapid population growth and the influx of people, the property taxes, and making sure the Alamo City continues to thrive. I want our jobs to be sustainable, right? For us to be able to employ all the wonderful people who live in San Antonio and who've grown up here, to have um, opportunities and great jobs and great lives here. And of course, I want us to make sure that our natural environment is as beautiful in 20 years from now as it is today. Very cool. Not only problems in the district, but of mm. course across the city. Yeah, and we went more in depth with the climate action plan. And then ironically, we're actually working on another story to mm -hmm. see if uh, San Antonio is cost effective to have an electric vehicle. Mm. So we're working on that because, I mean, you see the Tesla, right. you see all that. But is there the infrastructure in place? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of it's limited. Mm -hmm. I know there, you know, we have we have a charger here, at, you know, at Kesa, and I've seen them at the library, but it's not a lot so right. it'll be well, interesting we did, uh, to see how it develops right we did like man on the street which is we go out and we just mm -hmm. ask a bunch of people out and about in san antonio and the biggest problem people had was they said it was too expensive yeah and that so. too <laughs> but yeah we talked about so much more so much more than that we talked about pre-k for sa we talked about the coronavirus we talked about the expansion of san antonio you can check out the entire interview right now on ksat.com all right, time to talk the Spurs and the race for Saves got a little bit easier this morning. San Antonio bringing home a big W over. Now you're going head to head with the Orlando Magic. Still though, only 24 games left in the NBA's regular season. Somehow the Spurs chances of making the playoffs still alive. Right now they are tied for the longest playoff streak of all time. 22 straight years. 
and last night's W at the AT&T Center, giving them a step forward, step forward at least trying to make it 23. So you saw that, let's see, right now, 2.45 left in the game. The Spurs making a comeback, Rudy Gay doing what he can do, a little floater action there. But we are just gonna fast forward, beautiful three, and that was actually gonna be the last bucket for the Spurs. They go on to win 114-113. So Silver and Black back at it again tomorrow. Indiana Pacers, 7.30, right here at home, AT&T Center, and as we can see, a much better team at home than yes. they are on the road. Yeah, I loved, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Glad loved to have it. that win. It's yes. crazy because with just one win, they've jumped up to the 10th seed. And they're just three <laughs> games out. That's right. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 8, 10, 59 degrees out. Ooh. And the Invisible Man in theaters right now. Whoa, it looks scary. He's still Ooh. ahead. We have a sneak peek. And <laughs> do you remember watching Lizzie McGuire? I, okay, I didn't, but I know, I know the show. Sarah? Yes. Did you? Yes. There it is. Got the thumbs up. Well... Were you excited to hear a reboot? You might have to wait. We're gonna have the details. That's next. And taking a look outside with live cam, it went up to 59 degrees. Still pretty mild here in San Antonio. Been pretty lucky with those temperatures and it looks like we might have a pretty mild week, but be aware of some showers. Sarah's gonna give the details in just a bit. And welcome back. It's 814. All right, Lizzie McGuire fans, if you haven't heard by now, Hilary Duff is working on a reboot series of her once popular show, but she's hoping to find a TV home that's more appropriate for the grown up Lizzie. Right now, reports are that production on the show is paused. But in the meantime, in an Instagram post, the actress says she doesn't feel like Disney Plus is the right fit. Hmm. Rather, she wants to go to Hulu. Interesting. Duff went on to state she was, quote, incredibly excited to launch Lizzie on Disney Plus and her passion remains. But she feels a huge responsibility to honor the fans. The original series about a girl whose thoughts are expressed by her animated self-thoughts aired mm -hmm. from 2001 to 2004 on Disney Channel. You know, I think she does have a point because the people who watched Lizzie McGuire, like right. myself, have grown up quite a bit. And the <laughs> things that we find entertaining uh, now, we don't necessarily find that's entertaining back then. Mm -hmm. So That's true. But, I mean, you know, Disney Plus has a lot of stuff they for, do. you know, for not plus. just kids. They do. <laughs> they have a couple of really cool things yeah. like that Jeff Goldblum thing. Is yeah. Really mm. All the so. Star Wars stuff. Plus? Star Wars stuff. Yeah. What? Do you have Disney Plus? I do have Disney yes. Plus. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we'll I've see what happens. Here. Who knows? <laughs> but I did grow up watching Lizzie McGuire when I was in middle school. So pretty neat. Okay. Well, let's take a look at March. We are starting the month of March today. And I just thought we would get in a couple of facts here about the month. Usually a high temperature right around 74 degrees and an average morning low temperature right around 51. Uh, as far as rainfall goes, we see about a little bit more than two and a quarter inches of rainfall in the month of March. That's actually up from February by about half an inch of rainfall. So March is usually pretty good for rain. And what do you know? we got a chance for some storms as we head into the first week of March. Let's take a look at temperatures though. This morning we have really seen those clouds come into play. It's 59 and cloudy right now at San Antonio at the airport. Uh, 58 in Bulverde, 57 in Tarpley, 56 in Bandera and in Kerrville, 56 in Divine. These temperatures are about 15 degrees warmer than how we started off the day yesterday. 58 in Del Rio, 61 in Catula and 62 in Laredo. You'll remember yesterday it was very windy. We were hearing those winds howl from the southeast up to 35 miles per hour, gusting up to 35 miles per hour. We've still got a steady wind from the southeast at about five, but they've calmed down quite a bit. But that southeast wind has allowed for humidity to start to really make a return. And here you can see on the satellite that we're seeing low level humidity in the form of cloud cover early this morning. Uh, and uh, those low clouds have really moved in. But as we take a look at the future cast, we should be able to see some sunshine into the afternoon, a little bit of thinning out of those clouds. Uh, and that will be just enough to make us on the warm side this afternoon with a high temperature in the mid to upper 70s. Uh, with the south breeze at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Although it doesn't necessarily feel muggy outside right now, by tonight, though, you'll definitely notice the mugginess in the air as dew points will be very close to the temperature. And in fact, we could see some fog to start our day tomorrow. Our weather setup is fairly quiet right now across the central plains, but we do have a big pressure difference, a low pressure system over the panhandle, high pressure system over the Gulf of Mexico. That's what's streaming in that humidity. 
and that's why you'll really feel that humidity tomorrow. Low level moisture is one of the ingredients for rain and we'll get some support for that rain in the form of a big upper level low pressure system trough of low pressure going to be traversing over the Sierra Madres working its way into San Antonio and Texas by Tuesday and Tuesday night. That is our best chance for storms across the state of Texas. Our best chance for storms here in San Antonio Tuesday and Tuesday night. And some of those storms could be on the stronger side too with the potential for gusty winds and even uh, some storms may produce some uh, quarter sized hail, but we'll keep an eye on that. Not everybody is going to get a strong storm, but we should all get at least a little bit of rain, okay? Maybe up to half an inch of rain along and south of I-35, along and north of I-35, up to about an inch of rain. And in some places in the hill country, up to two inches of rainfall will be possible. So far, it's looking like it's going to be a good chance for some much needed soaking rainfall on Tuesday and Tuesday night across San Antonio and South Central Texas. But with it being the springtime, uh, we are going to see some of those spring like storms with the potential for a few boomers out there. So as we get closer to Tuesday and Wednesday, please download the KSAT Weather Authority app because we will send notifications right to your phone. We also have the capability to live stream storm coverage right to your phone on the KSAT Weather Authority app, which is pretty great technology. And we're really excited about it. Other than that, though, we'll clear out and it'll be nice as we end the weekend as we end the week rather from Wednesday uh, into the end of the week. Very nice overall. Thank yeah. you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 819, 59 degrees up. And The Invisible Man in theaters. Next on GMSA, a quick look at what you can expect. Good morning. Happy Sunday and happy March. 823 this Sunday morning. Do you like horror films? Yeah, I used to. I've, I've become quite the chicken lately. <laughs> this one looks good, though. A yeah, classic universal scary story getting a modern retelling with an important message. Yeah, I'm still scared, though. Rick Damagella has a preview of The Invisible Man debuting this weekend. Cecilia, although our relationship was far from perfect, I thought that you would talk to me rather than run away. Are you okay? Open your door! Elizabeth Moss plays a woman terrorized by her controlling presumed dead ex-boyfriend in The Invisible Man. The film brings a classic movie monster into the modern era and takes a hard look at issues of domestic abuse and gaslighting. It feels like you're boxing with a shadow, like you can't quite grasp the person. And so the idea that this, that, that Cecilia, my character, is getting out of this relationship and just keeps saying this is true, this is true, and no one believes her and no one's listening, I mean, it couldn't be more relevant for our times. The only thing more brilliant than inventing something that makes you invisible is coming up with the perfect way to torture you, even in death. The character fits that those themes like a glove, you know? He's an unseen man who is, you know, stalking and torturing and harassing people, so it kind of fits in to that area. I think that Lee has done brilliantly to kind of incorporate all of that and make it pal palatable to an audience by having it be in a horror film. Where are you? Where are you? Show yourself! Come on! Do it! There you are. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, not that too scary. What are we thinking? I don't know. Oh, will I go see it in the yeah. theaters? I don't know. It depends on my husband. <laughs> we'll check it out. What about you? Yeah, probably. Oh, Gabby and Rosalind are what, today? Producers. <laughs> Our producers. Oh, okay. Well, let us know. Fantastic. 825, <laughs> 59 degrees out. So people say dogs are humans' best friend. In the next half hour, we're going to tell you the heroic act a dog did to protect mm. its human family. Aw. Plus, the latest on the coronavirus still head on GMSA, why Rice University has asked some students to self-quarantine. And a man shot by police in Chicago still ahead on GMSA, the details of what happened. But first, we're going to take a look at birthdays this morning. Ariana, seven years old, happy birthday. Happy birthday, cute pick. And also wishing a happy birthday to Gwen, 65 years old, happy birthday. Keep sending in your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. Remember to include a name and age. We show them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. 
Good morning and happy Sunday. Happy March. It is the first day of March. Yes, it is. Thanks for joining us on this nice morning. Look, 60 degrees. We just hit 60 degrees. Yeah, very nice. Whew. Yesterday was gorgeous, Sarah. Are we going to have a competitor today? Unfortunately, we're not going to see as much sunshine as we saw yesterday. In fact, we'll struggle to see the sunshine until the afternoon, and you'll notice the mugginess in the air by the end of the day as well. So not as nice as yesterday, but not as breezy. So there you go. This morning, sunrise show, showed a few peaks of sunshine, but then some lower level clouds really moved in uh, just at about a eight o'clock and those low level clouds have been hanging on and we'll continue to see that stratus deck stick around uh, again through the morning hours. It's 60 degrees at the airport and meanwhile it's 55 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 60 in Comfort, 57 in Kerrville, 52 at Rio Medina and looking at the day today again we've got this cloudy start here. Uh, temperatures will uh, get up into the upper 60s by noon and that's about when we'll see some sunshine, some breaks in the clouds and so into the afternoon it'll be warm. We'll be looking at a high temperature likely in the mid to upper 70s south breeze at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Today will be quiet as far as rain goes. Similar story tomorrow just a little bit on the muggy side but our rain chances really start to kick up Tuesday Tuesday night and early Wednesday morning when we have our uh, next chance for good thunderstorms in the area. I'll detail that chance for thunderstorms coming up in just a few minutes and what you can expect for the rest of the first week of March. Max. Thank you, Sarah. A local grocery store destroyed by flames that quickly filled up the building early this morning. It happened in the 4800 block of Medical Drive around 2 in the morning. Alicia Barrett live from the shopping center all morning. So, Alicia, have there been any injuries reported yet? No injuries to report. That's the good news. Fire crews have done searches and there's no one inside. No reports of anyone missing. So that's the good news. But let me tell you also this store closed around 11 last night. The fire started at two. So again, no one inside, uh, but obviously a tough sight for the owner and his family to see. They've stuck around all morning since they were allowed in the area and they're just in disbelief. They're wondering how this happened, what caused this, and they're standing by for arson investigators to arrive. But the San Antonio Fire Department says it could be days before they determine a damage estimate and a cause for this fire. What they do know is that this fire started on the second floor and fire crews fought those flames aggressively to contain it and make sure other businesses weren't affected. Right behind here is a popular destination, Taqueria Data Point. But again, the only small business affected this morning is Mustafa Grocery. And I did speak to the owner, Mr. Syed Siddiqui and his brother Ahmed Fayaz. And you can really just see how concerned, the disappointment, the hurt that they're feeling this morning. They say that they've worked so hard for this grocery store for 13 years before they said it was the size of a small kitchen. And through the years, they've been able to expand that to 8,000 square feet. And that's what was lost this morning. But they added that there's hope for them. They have community support. I can tell you community members have been coming back and forth um, to make sure that the family is OK and the family also has insurance. So they're hoping that with those two factors, they're able to recover and get their back life, their life back to normal. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, police need your help finding a man who robbed a convenience store on the far west side. They say a man wearing a white coat and mask walked into the Circle K in the 100 block of Demia Drive around 1230 in the morning and held the clerk up at gunpoint. Now, the gunman was able to get away with an undisclosed amount of money. No injuries were reported, but if you have any information that can help investigators, you are asked to call police. In your morning headlines, after former Vice President Joe Biden scored a much-needed victory in South Carolina, the presidential race now quickly shifts towards next week's Super Tuesday. ABC's Trevor Alt explains what the latest is and why Tom Steyer dropped out of the race. Good morning. There is certainly wind in the sails of the Joe Biden campaign this morning. He's long touted South Carolina as his firewall state and Saturday night he proved it with that decisive victory owed in large part to overwhelming support coming from black voters there in South Carolina. The chair of the state Democratic Party talking about Biden's deep ties to the state and said that the voters there were voting pragmatically when they chose to support him. Biden then coming out with momentum that he hasn't yet seen in this race when he spoke Saturday night. 
And while Biden is savoring this victory, by the time he claimed it, his opponents had already shifted their efforts to Super Tuesday states. Senator Bernie Sanders finished second in South Carolina while he was in the middle of packing crowds in Massachusetts and in Virginia. And several other candidates have already moved on to Super Tuesday states, hoping to finally gather some of that momentum before it's too late. Billionaire businessman Tom Steyer, who finished third in South Carolina, did drop out of the race Saturday night. And now the rest of the Democratic Party looks towards Super Tuesday. By the time we get Tuesday evening, 40 percent of the delegates in the race will have been awarded. Right now, Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders are at the top of the current delegate rankings. But Sanders is leading in some key Super Tuesday states. Trevor All, ABC News. Columbia, South Carolina. And President Donald Trump planning two rallies this week. He will be hosting his supporters at an event in Charlotte, North Carolina, Monday evening, just a day ahead of the state's Democratic primary. On Thursday, Vice President Mike Pence and his wife will host another rally in Minnesota. Now to the latest involving the coronavirus. Rice University has asked a small group of students and staff to self-quarantine due to possible exposure to the coronavirus. Now the alert was posted on the university's website late last night, noting that this action was, quote, out of an abundance of caution, end quote. Now the school went on to say that they are taking all necessary precautionary steps and working closely with and at the guidance of Harris County Public Health. Now at this time, the university not planning to suspend campus operations, events, or any classes. And a man shot by Chicago police near a transit stop. We do want to warn you, this video may be disturbing and difficult to watch. Now, two police officers are saying they tried to arrest the man for moving between two train cars. That's a violation of the city ordinance. Now, the video shows a man struggling to get out of custody. One officer first tries to taser him, but the man is able to break free. That's when one of the officers fires twice. The man is getting treated for two gunshot wounds at a local hospital. The officers will be placed on administrative duties during an investigation. And in the state of Tennessee, hundreds of people without a home this morning after a fire ripped through an apartment complex in Nashville. A two alarm fire turned massive last night. Officials say that everyone inside was safely evacuated. One person taken to the hospital for smoke inhalation. But get this, a dog rescued from the third floor of the building. Luckily, though, residents were quick to help each other evacuate the apartments. And in Milwaukee, a vigil will be held at their city hall courtyard to remember the victims of the mass shooting at Miller Brewery this past weekend. Now this evening, leaders from advocacy, community, faith and labor organizations will join government officials in speaking at the healing event. The mayor of Milwaukee said it was a tragedy that's kind of unexplainable. One local company said they are giving 100% of their sales through next Thursday back to the families. The Miller Company says they will be donating $1 of every course purchase as well. And if you thought you had a tough dog, get a load of this next story. A family pet in Atlanta, Georgia, may have saved a young girl's life after she was shot. Now, the dog went after a pair of robbers who broke into the home, threatened to shoot the girl. The dog managed to distract them, still standing strong despite being injured. And the, dirt, the girl was home alone with the small dog when she watched as two men began forcing their way in. That's when the men immediately fired two shots. Now, the girl made her escape through the garage, but the gunman followed. Fortunately, they did not go after the child. And the dog, Starla, kept going after the gunman despite that dog being shot two times. Now, the men jumped in their car and sped away. And a victory bell ringing here at home after four children celebrated being cancer free. The hospital posted on Facebook Thursday afternoon announcing the four young cancer warriors rang the bell to symbolize the end of their cancer treatments. Now all four patients were diagnosed with acute leukemia, one of the most commonly diagnosed cancers in children. All four patients, Kira, William, Symphony, and Mark took part in the bell ringing, the ceremony with their friends and their families by their sides. Such good news. Fantastic. 839, 60 degrees out. And making one kid's wish come true. Still ahead on GMSA, how an Atlanta kid became a robo hero for a day with the help of his local sheriff's office. I'm so excited for that story. We've been talking <laughs> about it all morning long. And get this, the first case of zombie deer disease 
and it's been confirmed just northwest of San Antonio. Up next, what Texas parks and wildlife officials have to say about it. Yes, I'm talking about you. I'll tell you what, <laughs> she is a little mama's baby. As long as she's being held tight, she'll look around, but loves to cuddle. You're going to meet this little girl coming up on Good Morning San Antonio. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it's a nice 60 degrees. And although Sarah says it might not be as much sunshine as yesterday, still pretty mild and nice. We're going to check in with her to see what we can expect, though, for the rest of your work week. We'll be right back. It is adorable and cute time. <laughs> That's here from the Animal Defense League. And this little one, she has just got such a great face with the different colorings on her. I know, all her little, little wrinkles. wrinkles. And we were kind of taking her face. She doesn't like it, but just a big <laughs> mush <much> face. face. <laughs> okay, no dogs were hurt in recording this segment. <laughs> Don't call it. But you're uh, calling to adopt her. Who yes. is this little girl? <laughs> this is Malia. She lives at our Paul Jolly Center uh, for adoption down by the zoo. She is just under three months old. Um, she also has a sister named Malibu, too, and she has has just as many wrinkles and just as much of a smush face. <laughs> maybe they'll grow into the wrinkles. Yeah, maybe they will. Maybe she'll have her wrinkles forever, or maybe it's just extra skin for growing. <laughs> I keep telling myself, I'll grow into the wrinkles. My neck. So, anyway, a uh, whole different topic. What do you got going on? Yeah, so uh, we just want to really remind everybody that all of our available pets are on our website now. So because we have two different locations, we have so many animals that you can look at. Sometimes when you come to campus, it's a little bit overwhelming, but when you can sit, just sit down at home and look at our website we have all of our animals available for adoption um, as soon as they are made available they're posted immediately to the website with pictures so if I'm looking for a, a female that is about 30 pounds and maybe a mixture of this and that and I can well yeah so when it. you go to our website um, it's broken down a little bit by age and then by size so okay. you can select kittens you can select puppies or you can select large dogs medium-sized dogs or small dogs or you can just browse all the pets and then when you click on the pets account it will have um, male or female and then okay. approximately what it is um, and as much information as we have as well as a picture oh wow that's a great way to do a little bit of shopping but then you got to meet them in person and <laughs> use with the puppies you get the puppy breath and all that and don't forget about the big ones too so and she's got a sister as well and if you'd like to adopt check out the website or just head on out to 1130 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo 655-1481 is that number thank you Beth all right, well, this is a new one for me. Officials reporting something called zombie deer. According to Texas Parks and Wildlife, a five and a half year old white tailed deer has tested positive for zombie deer disease or chronic wasting disease. They say the deer is being held at a deer breeding facility in Kimball County, just northwest of San Antonio. And it's the first positive case of that disease that's been detected since 2011. Now samples taken from the deer as part of the mortality surveillance test in early February. Results confirmed National Veterinary Services Lab in Iowa. If you want, need to know anything more about this disease or the situation, just head to ksat.com. But for now, we're going to toss it over to Sarah. Sarah, how's it looking out there? Always love following zombie deers. All right, right now outside we have got cloudy skies and it's going to be hard for us to shake this cloud cover until about the afternoon when we will see a few peaks of sunshine. It's much warmer as we start our day today than yesterday. Yesterday we were starting off in the 40s. Right now it's 60 degrees outside and humidity is at 80%. We are seeing a southeast breeze at about 10 miles per hour, but again that is a lot calmer than yesterday when we were seeing gusts of up to 35 miles per hour. Take a look at the satellite you can see those cirrus clouds and the low level clouds well in place right now and a wider view here. Just about all of us under complete cloud cover right now as temperatures are on the mild side. 55 in Hondo, 57 in Kerrville, 58 in New Braunfels, 58 in Del Rio, 62 in Laredo and 61 in Catula. It's those areas southwest of San Antonio that could see a high temperature in the mid 80s today. Well, those dew points are up quite a bit, although it's not necessarily humid at the moment with dew points in the 50s. By the end of the day, our dew points will be in the 60s. And once we get a dew point past 60 degrees, that's when you can really feel it outside. That's when it's a bad hair day and when you feel every degree on the thermometer. But take a look at the future cast. Clearing skies later on in the afternoon, that's gonna allow our high temperature to be in the mid to upper 70s locally around San Antonio. But again, remember Catula Laredo? They'll be in the mid 80s, possibly even close to 90 degrees this afternoon. 
March has really come in fast, hasn't it? So today, just to break it down for San Antonio, these cloudy skies will be stubborn. A few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon, 77 for the high in the Alamo City, a south breeze at 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then tonight, you'll really notice the mugginess in the air as those dew points get up close to 60 degrees. Our weather setup across the central plains is relatively calm at the moment, but you look out to the west and you can see some snowfall across Nevada, uh, Salt Lake City, up into the Rockies. Uh, this is a dip in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's really going to start to dig and a trough of low pressure is going to bring us our next chance for scattered showers and a few strong thunderstorms as well. Now this low pressure system will make it to Texas by Tuesday and Tuesday night. Tuesday night is our best chance for rain in San Antonio, but you'll notice at the moment looks like the San Angelo up to the Dallas area has the best chance for storms. Here in San Antonio, we've got about a 40 to 60% chance for scattered showers and storms Tuesday and Tuesday night. You can see that right here again, Tuesday 40% during the day, then Tuesday night 60%. That's when we'll have thunderstorms in the area. We are starting to enter springtime, so spring like thunderstorms are possible, those strong boomers. And then by Wednesday morning, all that rain should be moving on off to the east. In fact, speaking of spring like weather, the Storm Prediction Center, the SBC, has issued a slight risk for severe weather for just about the entire KSAT 12 viewing area. That's that yellow color you see here. Now slight risk is a two on a scale of one to five, just to put that in perspective. And some storms that develop on Tuesday and Tuesday night could be capable of producing quarter sized hail and gusty winds. Again, most of the KSAT 12 viewing area is under that slight risk, and this is an evolving forecast. So we'll be able to uh, really modify that forecast as we get closer, give you a great timeline. Other and that will clear out and by the uh, end of the week it should be pretty nice. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much, Sarah. Time now is 8.50, 60 degrees out. And becoming both a robot and a hero for a day. Just ahead, how one kid's dream was made a reality. But first, we're going to take a look at birthdays this morning. First up, Aww. Ninfa, 90 years old. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Ninfa. Remember to keep posting your birthday pictures to ksat.com slash birthdays. We show your name and an age every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday right here on GMSA. And here's the news you need to know before you go. The Mustafa grocery store in the 4800 block of Medical Drive caught flames overnight. Fire officials say the fire happened just after 3 this morning. That was a three alarm fire. It was quickly controlled and contained to the second floor. Unclear at this time how the fire actually started and still unclear the cost of the damage. Luckily, no one was injured, but arson investigators still trying to figure everything out. And no one was hurt after four cars crashed into each other early this morning. Now, police say that crash happened just before 2 a.m. on Highway 90 and Probant. Two drivers were headed eastbound on Highway 90 and crashed into each other, leading to two other vehicles to wreck as well. Now, there was debris all over the road, so police were forced to shut it down for about 40 minutes as they cleaned up. Again, no injuries reported. And who pulls more weight in your relationship when it comes to your chores? Sarah's pointing at herself. <laughs> Just ahead, the apps that can help you keep things fair and square. Hmm. Hey, Michael does a great job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have six allergens in the atmosphere. Palm count just came in. Mold is low at 310. Oak is low at 40. Hackberry, mulberry low at 30. Ash and grass low at 10. So although it's busy, they're all low, which is good news. It's cloudy outside right now. We will see a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. That'll allow us to warm up to 77 this afternoon. We'll feel the humidity tonight. Humidity, one of the ingredients for rain, which looks possible in the form of scattered storms Tuesday and especially Tuesday night. Some of those storms could be on the stronger side. We'll continue to update that forecast, give you a good timeline as we get closer and closer to Tuesday and Tuesday night, but we'll clear out by the end of the week. Not too bad. Nope. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Before we go, we wanted to leave on a high note. It's not every day you get to become a robot superhero, but the Orange County Sheriff's Office granted a 10-year-old's make-a-wish to become just that. Gage Pike underwent heart surgery last year. With the help of the Sheriff's Office, they staged three objectives, stop a bank robbery, put out a building fire, and rescue someone from a collapsed building. Really oh, wonderful oh, to see cool. that. that's cool. Just a superhero for a day. That's awesome. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Happy Sunday.